All right. Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. <laughs> it's fucking awkward, though, because, like, I don't know how to do any of this stuff either. So, it's uh, for me, all I do is just fucking start talking to people and, and seeing what they've got to say. And, and you're a man with many, many things to say because you do many, no. many things. No, more like doing than talking. Doing than talking. Yeah. So, well, where did you just get back from? Because that looked like a pretty cool adventure. Um. Three weeks in Alice Springs, uh, a couple of friends organized uh, building a ramp for a remote community out there. So I put my hand up to go help out and yeah, I just had a bit of an adventure before and after building this ramp in the desert. Um, and that was all through BMX work um, or BMX yeah, riding? I guess so, like yeah, the, the BMX and skateboard affiliation. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. It was how many ramps have you built? I've lost count. Yeah, but, yeah, not like built um, like one hundred percent of them, but like I've chipped in and built a few ramps around the planet. I guess. Yeah, like yeah. Volunteering, the you know, you got plenty of time on your hands when you're traveling. So yeah. Just so, how many countries have you been to? I don't know, I'd probably be lying if I said like somewhere between 10 and 15. Um, around there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and I all of even, your BMX in tow? Yeah, just just all BMX traveling really. Yeah. Um, so seeing different spots and you know, what, what type of terrain you can ride. Yep. And Where's the we, funkiest place you've ridden? Um, Nepal. <laughs> Nepal, yeah. Was yeah. it just a big hill bomb down the Himalayas yeah. or...? Like 80k heel bomb. Serious? Yeah, with with some ledges and stops and things like that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is nuts. How long does that take? Um, I don't know. Maybe stop and start filming some stuff. Yeah. About I don't know, six hours. Yeah, right. That's pretty good time. Yeah. 80k's. What speeds do you get up to? Flat out. Flat out, as fast as it goes. <laughs> There's no speedo on that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really, I didn't really time myself. I just, just went with it. Yeah, I know. I yeah. got back in, whatever time it was, at sunset. So it could have been like six, eight, eight o'clock. So between yeah. six and eight hours. And is this like an organized, you've got places to stay thing? No. Or are you just pulling up and camping? Yeah, or? Just, I just, yeah that stuff's just like... All out adventure, no no plans. Yeah. No no shelter, no roof. Just wherever you stop is where you stop. And and how do you bring all your stuff with you? Because you don't you obviously don't have panniers and shit on a BMX. Uh, and yeah, it's just you know a bike, one tool, and a couple of bits of clothing. And yeah. Something to keep you warm at night. That's it. It's yeah, really yeah. Real simple. And how the hell do you keep warm in Nepal? I, I assume that it's pretty cold and. Um. Uh, sometimes it. I guess if to use like a, an analogy or not an analogy, um, um, trying to have a, a mineral lifestyle traveling, uh, have uh, some items that are have double use. So yep. my bicycle bag end up being my sleeping bag. Oh yeah, yeah, good so idea. I don't need to carry it. You know, it saves a lot of it's a lot of room that way. And your clothes are your sleeping materials too. So you just yep. sleep in the same things you. Right in, wake, wake up in, and a puncture repair kit. Do you bring one of those? Yeah, um, yeah, just yeah, recycling old tubes that way, making yeah. your own stuff on the go, so you don't yeah. have to keep buying and yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like living really cheaply. Yeah, I live like 
zero money. While and coming. oh, and you've been pretty successful at, at at doing that by this own. You're still alive, mm. so that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And you, so the first time I heard about Adam, is it Adam Hoff? Huff. Yeah. Huff. Yeah. Like Adam Huff. Pronounced. See, I've never had to known how to pronounce your name. Yeah. It's just as if you spelt it H U W F. Oh, that'll be heaps like, easier. Like like yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Adam Huff, I heard of you because of BMX and um, and hanging out at the BMX shop and then people going, there's this fucking crazy dude from Melbourne and <laughs> he just eats out of bins and he goes to ghetto <laughs> spots and makes fucking crazy shit to ride. And then I seen you on Instagram <laughs> oh, and he does. <laughs> he just goes and eats shit out of bins and builds some crazy shit. And I was like, that is fucking mad. And then I met you and, like, you're a good bloke and stuff and, and – um, you could ride like a motherfucker, so that's pretty crazy too. But then you came up with this or you partnered in this rubber cuppy thing. Yeah. Which um, seems to like suit exactly what Adam kind of yeah. exudes in his lifestyle. So what what's all that about? Um, I guess it's just like, yeah, that thing I said before, like hands and many pies and just like wanting to mould something or fix something that seems to be like, Bit problematic um like you know we have waste and um people just making new things out of plastic and stuff like that. yeah and uh, yeah just liking coffee all the time but uh, um, do you drink a lot of coffee yeah like maybe once a day so i'm not, not consider that heaps yeah. but yeah it's just like grab a coffee done um yeah, yeah. A good taste for coffee i guess and but, how did you get from good taste of coffee, I don't want to keep chucking fucking rubbish in the bin every yeah. time I have one? I always didn't like the single-use kind of stuff, so I did just, you know, always had time to drink in and enjoy the, the coffee shop. So ultimately yeah. that's what you should do. And I started, like, wanting to drink and take away and ride around, get, life's getting a bit busy or whatever, and just... Um, me and my partner, um, I was getting. I actually got a t- takeaway coffee, two takeaway coffees once, and we actually had a discussion about um, these are bad. I'm like, yeah, we both know that we're having a good discussion about it, and yeah, so we came up with like um, all these tubes going to waste at the bike store I work at, and yeah. we had a, a light bulb moment, and it's like, yeah, what about putting the tubes on some jam jars and kind of evolved from that and yeah and, and so part um was seeing other um companies trying to um do reusable coffee cups and it didn't suit because like bits of plastic here and there or it yeah. wasn't like it was only a half a ass attempt at being environmentally friendly yeah. um and when i try and do something i put 110 percent yeah. of my effort in so i'm not gonna buy into something that's not try not to buy into something that's only half done so yeah it's like all right that's kind of going the wrong direction but with i don't know an environmental impact that they've haven't got done quite right you know it's probably just a money-making thing yeah um and so i made my own my friends wanted thought it was pretty cool looking and from you know, from a visual point of view, and so I just handmade all these jam jar cups, and seemed to get quite popular. Uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. Um, just kind of started doing its own yeah, thing from it there, or exponentially growing from there. And like, all right, let's. Um, me and my partner decided, you know, let's um, go to a cafe and a few cafes, see if we can get some orders and if we can make some money up front to start purchasing jars or you know getting our product into cafe if people liked it um yeah um just in one day we just got all the orders we needed plus some yep. and yeah just grew from that and you know just all our, all our friends loving and, it and you were saying before because that was a big number you were saying before like a hundred jars yeah, that's a fair few people to get committed to be yeah. able to do that to be able to start the whole thing. So like, yeah. that's a fair effort in itself. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, I guess uh, like it's labour intensive and 
uh, yeah, it's like a handmade product. Yeah. And yeah, it's, um, it was a fair effort. The first first go it didn't really make a manufacturing kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just made a handful for a couple of people, and that was it. And then like, you know, got to make these things because someone's buying them. It was like a bit stress stressful and figuring out going through all these little evolutions of or well, version one, two of rubber cuppy to so what it is what now. What version and, are you up to? Uh, version four, maybe four. Yep. Like you know, the little iterations here and there to kind of change it, and you know, it still looks similar to the original, but yeah, you know, just you know, yeah. It's, and it's it, has it been like improvement changes, like in in the materials yeah, the materials or materials just... changes? Um, yeah, it got ten times better over time through um, having our net. Uh, we end up having a whole bunch of networking things with um. Australia Post and a social enterprise, and that led to opening more doors, um, asking more questions, and yeah, and people always wanting to help out. And yeah. So it's not just me making the cups, there's like the collective, everyone wanting to help out and do good, and yeah, it kind of just evolved from that. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's got pretty busy. I've pretty never, busy. I've never claimed to have, to have a full time job until now. <laughs> In the last year. So this is your first full time job. Yeah. And how many uh, how many uh, jars? Like so, it, it it's a jam jar with a Basically, tube yeah, around a jam it. Jam jar, yeah. How the fuck do you get that jar in that tube? Um, I had to make my own tooling to make yeah. it happen, or else yeah, I wouldn't be able to make so many orders. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd be a year behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how how many jars have you made? Do you know? A couple of thousand. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it's all by like the majority of it's still yeah, good good percentage handmade. Um, yeah, it's just like the nitty gritty stuff that really makes your hands bleed. Um, like literally, bliss, yeah, literally cracks your hands. It's such hard work sometimes. Yeah. So um, I have to figure out how to make that easier. Yeah. And yeah, now it's not that hard, but it still takes toll on your hands. Yeah, for sure. You know, to clean everything and get everything up to scratch to make it make it um, a saleable kind of product saleable, yeah. And yeah make it look nice and, yeah all those things are, yeah pretty time consuming are there specific tubes that you have to use I mean yeah yeah uh, yeah through that um, version one to version three or four we're up to now I guess yeah, um, yeah think yeah, the materials and um, have changed and, yeah for sure yeah our collection of tubes. Um, I now now come from Australia Post, so we've got a partnership with Australia Post. And they're, and oh they're, yeah, of they're, course. They're from all their into, motorbike tubes. Yeah, um, yeah. They're um, into small business and uh, and startup businesses. Yep. Um, they're really into that. I don't know what the actual phrase or words are for that, but yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like a social. Yeah, they're into yeah, social, social enterprise, enterprise and stuff. Yeah. Social entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. Yeah, something like that. That's mm. fucking cool, man. That's that's really good. Yeah. So. Have, how have you gotten financial support behind an idea like that? Did you have have you applied for grants or anything, or have you got like support from other um, organisations, or is this no. a self funded thing? Um, yeah, we between me and my partner, we've put our own money into it, and yeah, just um, I don't know how to explain it like selling the cups and just just making making do with it. So we yeah. don't really make any money. It's just like a it's not, Keep, not, not, keeps you eating. Yeah, keeps keep, you living. Yeah, keeps the business going. It's yeah, um, yeah it's like an honest business. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not to eventually live on an island. It's just you know, you know there's, there's yeah. a problem. Let's, re- let's solve it. You're not going to be uh, moving try, to try, Mallorca yeah. or something soon. And <laughs> I actually want to move here. Like, yeah, beautiful. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd love to have some more uh, entrepreneurial people mm-hmm. kicking around the place. So. I mean, the the other the other thing that um, touching on was your um, your ability to find something out of nothing. So some of the stuff mm-hmm. that I've seen, especially on your Instagram, with some of the ghetto spots, and you've built up like some some pretty impressive like quarter pipes and spines and, and bits and pieces to just ride. I mean, mm-hmm. what what gives somebody the motivation in the first place? But how the fuck do you find these places and all the materials the time and the ability to put it all together 
it's it looks like a lot of work. Yeah. Um, to, uh, again, it's like uh, um, fingers of many pies and just adventure. Always have your eyes open. You know, there's, everything's already been made, so it's just like laying flat down or you know hard rubbish. It's, you can build everything out of everything that's already pre-existing. It's kind of like how a rubber cup is. It's like things already pre-existing. Yeah. You know, like tubes, are single use, and they just go to the landfill, and we make uh, coffee cups from something that's just already a waste. And um, yeah, it's with the skate parks. I don't know, old buildings and offices uh, just just staying there doing nothing and there's so much material to build and create something that you enjoy. Um, yeah. A lot, you know, some artists go and rip down internal walls of buildings and stuff to make you know, like an art studio, like a pop-up art studio or whatever. And, yep. you know, use, it's just, there's so much material already out there and anywhere to be able to, be pr- really creative and. Um, have you ever worked as a carpenter or any anything like that? No. No. So you no. have you got any like uh, trades background or nothing? No. So you definitely made some impressive stuff without any uh, trade kind of background. Yeah. Just uh, uh, I guess just high school was like you know you did a year of arts or a year of um, woodwork. That's pretty much it. And just, I don't know. Um, yeah, just all that, vol- I guess, maybe just like volunteering in different jobs here and there around, around the planet, helping make bits of houses for families or whatever in somewhere around in America or in Germany, yep. like repairing stuff. You know, end up building up all these skills, like a broad spectrum of skills for many, I don't know what would you call it? Um, well, they're practical outlets. skills, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, practical, yeah. Like yeah. Practical skills are actually uh, handy in day-to-day everything. Yeah. So it's kind of like- I mean, look, uh, I think a massive problem that we have these days is that we're all really keen on getting educated and getting super educated and, and being at a really high point where we can tell people that we're really educated mm. and we practically did nothing. And there's mm. there's a lack of practical skills and practicalities and and. You know, that's why it's, it's interesting when you see people like yourself being able to say, well, you know, I just want to do that. Mm. So I'm going to work out how I'm going to do it. And even to the point now that you're going, well, there's stuff that you're doing and it's really wasteful yeah. and it can be reused and we should probably reuse it. I, mean, I don't remember the show, but I remember, I think it was last year when they filled up that tram in Melbourne. Warren Waste, yeah. Man, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah, once, um, actually, before uh, before Warren Waste, um between me and my partner and her business, uh, Leftover Lovers, um, we kind of had trouble. It, I already am hard at describing things anyways, but before War and Waste, it was hard to talk about environmental impact to the, the, the masses, I guess. And yep. and then when someone makes a TV show like that, it just, it just you go, yep, I'll make this cup out of rubber and glass, boom, they go, oh, yeah, get, they just almost instantly get it. It's like, oh, it does this and this and this and this. And so but before of, that was like it just went in one ear and out the other through trying to talk to people. But it's yeah. Just, so, you know, it's, it's actually, yeah, the, the knowledge is now, you know, it's bit, you know, people being educated a bit more, better, uh, through like, yeah, through like war and places, uh, video, things like war and waste. And, um, yeah, Cause makes, was that done by the chaser people? I'm not quite sure. I've only yeah. seen. I haven't really watched the War and Waste. To be honest. No, look, no, neither have I. I try to stay away <laughs> from fucking television and all that. But I remember seeing that, and and I think it was just on a news, like you know, it probably popped up on social media or yeah. something. And I was astounded, and I was saying, "Well, this mm-hmm. this happened. This literally happens every morning in yeah, Melbourne. Yeah. It's this many." Mm-hmm. And you go, "Fuck me, man! That is a lot of cups, and that's one city. Yeah. It's not even a massive city. So if you put that together for every." city in the world everyone likes coffee it's not like it it's mm. a cross-cultural fucking yeah. type of uh type of thing to have it's coffee like in the morning and yeah 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 it's 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 a pretty big thing so have 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 you you're getting legs you're making these jars you've got a partner uh in in australia post being able to supply your materials have, have you have you got this spreading australia wide now have you got this in different states um, um there's a few 
cafes that have um, uh, made orders with us around like WA and uh, in New South Wales and uh, Adelaide. Um, yeah, which slowly getting, slowly getting, getting everything there. out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's still, still pretty small. We're not like a big corporate business, so I'm just um, plotting along. So, <laughs> but it's you, going really well, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and how do you juggle your time? Like, so you, how long have you just been up in uh, in Northern Territory for? Um, one month. Tomorrow we've been on holidays. Yeah. So business is kind of just at hold. At the on moment. hold. Yeah, on hold for a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, emails are still coming in and getting inquiries, and it's gotten um, uh, pretty busy still, I guess, yeah. in that in that area. Um, I'm not that great with the, the digital stuff and emails, so um, yeah, got people helping me. Yep. My partner. That, that um, is always good. That is <laughs> definitely always good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just going to be real busy next week. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have bleeding fingers next week and... Maybe. 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 It's just sore hands. I've been moisturizing <laughs> my hands a lot. Uh, what do you <laughs> so use? <laughs> um, I'm not going to say. Just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what you should be doing is just stealing as many aloe vera plants that you can mm, possibly get hold of. Make my own. Yeah. Absolutely. Because that shit's fucking wonderful. Yeah, everyone should be making their own. Uh, everything. <laughs> Absolutely. So what what else do you make of your own? Like? Um, I know, just little bits and pieces of jewellery. Um, yeah. Just you know, every now and then something pops up that needs to be made. Just, I don't know. Plot along and yeah, get I've, it done. Yeah, I've never actually... It just, that stuff just happens. It's I don't know, being a hands-on person... You don't record it. It's just like it just happens, and yeah. it's either with someone else or for yourself. And that's it. It's just a day to day to day thing. But yeah, it's just a common thing. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, never had to explain that one before, so I don't know. No. <laughs> ah, look, man. I mean, it's, it's uh, one of those things that's probably hard to explain, mm, really. Yeah. But uh, you don't get asked those questions mm. too often either. Yeah. So how how do you how do you see, I mean, your life seems to revolve around BMX and now revolving around the uh, um, the Cafe. rubber cuppy stuff as well? And yeah. um, I guess trying to balance it out. You know, uh, you know uh, every business is hard the first year, and like, so you got to put full time effort into it. And yeah. I guess you want to figure out how to streamline a few things and free up time and be more leisure um, or you can just put a stop button on it and nick off for a month. Yep. And, yep. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's uh, going to be a bit more freer. When so you're not going to stop adventuring then? No. <laughs> it's just a just little, little time off and put my head down to, um, uh, what's the word? Um, not solve a problem, but address, address a problem that's yep. out there and, one is single-use cups, I guess. Um, just so happens to be, you know, I make, make them out of rubber and glass and now so instead of plastic. One of the and and one of the things I, I hope is getting a bit more traction in in people's mind is like when I walk into a supermarket these days, and from meeting and knowing people like yourself and looking at uh, things that are single-use things, and then you see. Um, two sweet potatoes on a polystyrene plate wrapped in glad wrap. Mm. How the fuck does that make you feel when the, you're somebody that's committed in trying to make a difference mm. in one respect and then you've got these big multinational, multi-corporation things just wrapping nature's own product in man-made crap? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have the – that's like a, a massive topic that could take a whole – Date or yeah, a long time to talk about, but um, yeah, there's there's definitely things you can buy and don't have to buy because there's alternatives out there. Mm. Basically, um, you know, I try my best to you know uh, remind myself to bring my own holders, my own backpack or whatever to yeah. be able to do that stuff. And you can do like little um, kind of like 
punky type of thing, like um, anti. I don't know what the word is. Um, uh, you can take the packaging off and leave it at the counter at the store and get them to deal with the with the rubbish, rubbish. themselves. Yeah. So, have, it, you know, um, uh, have you done that before? Yeah, I've done it a few times. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of times. Um, yeah, it's um, uh, visual, look visual impact weird? is definitely um, big. Um, yeah, it, I don't. Know it's thought provoking. I think. Yeah. Um, it really leaves leaves a mark if you kind of like you know like make a visual impact by doing something like that and yeah yeah hope in hope that you know, they'll think about it next time or it'll trickle up into the up to the big guys and um, they'll change their ways a bit. Um. It's 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 something that and again not watching a hell of a lot of TV or, or, or anything yeah. like that. I get a lot of my news through social media or through yeah, just same. people's interaction and things. Mm -hmm. And it does seem to me that there are more people thinking about those things yeah. and you always kind of see a post on Facebook or something that says, like, I can't believe it, I walked into Woolworths and, and they had this and it was wrapped up and it was fucking stupid. Yeah. But it never seems to go further than that. No. And, it, and it's like people like to um, uh, be recognised for their attention to a problem. Mm. But they don't want to address the problem itself, and it and it takes people like yourself and and like your your partner that that are changing something and doing something mm. different. Yeah, so that thing you said earlier, where it's like people get to a point and then it gets too hard, and it's like those, um, I don't know, those people that have the extra oomph and courage to jump off the edge of the cliff to yeah. get the ball rolling. Um, yeah, so a lot of people don't just accept. The way things are, and yeah. don't want to change things, and for you know, I guess for the good, or for um, everyone else, or the planet. Um, so, what what would you say the 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 worst example of dumbassery, which is a technical term for fuck wittery? Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, you know, the, for for me, I think it's when I walk into a service station and you see. That uh, somebody's selling a banana in a service station just, for five dollars, and it just seems so stupid and opportunistic. And they're yeah. capitalising on people who looked at their social media and they went, "Oh man, it's so fucking bad!" And oh, that's an organic banana. I'll buy that. Yeah. They're not particularly doing fuck all about anything except for making themselves feel good or being able to show their workmates that they bought an organic banana. Um, now that just pisses me off, but. Uh, have, have you got an example that um, you see that you just go, for fuck's sake, um, why? Um, using that banana thing, um, one is, uh, if it's about packaging, um, yeah, having bananas packaging, a uh, uh, package with card wrap is uh, pretty, what the fuck? <laughs> it's fucking um, mind-blowing, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get that. It's got its own pack built in. It comes with it. Um, yeah. Um, and it uh, seems to be able to survive outside and fine, inside yeah. and do its own thing. And mm. yeah, there's, there's a lot more to it than that, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the way that people manufacture things in um, big corporations. So it's there's a lot more than just the packaging is on a banana. It's, there's a lot more to it. Um, I don't, I don't know much about it, to be honest, so yeah. I can't really speak too much. No, no, no. I just no. know that like, it shouldn't be there, and yep. I directly do something about it yeah. in my own little way. And do you have any little uh, other protesty type of things that you do, like if you do see stuff like that besides leaving the uh, the packaging on the counter? or? Um, yeah, well, I, you know, I work at like a – I'm a bicycle mechanic and I work at a bike store, so uh, – the, the bike company has to make money you know, to keep the doors open, whatever. Yeah. But I also pass on the knowledge, what even while I'm working, to say you can you can make um, patches out of the old tube that you just was about to throw in the bin. Just like little things to teach everyone that is more positive and environmental environmental impact ways to keep riding bikes or yeah. Um, yeah, there's just always some little 
way or some little incentive to say that you're a good person and just not here to make money. Yeah. Um, so on your writing, on your on your BMX writing, and you've been around the world and been to some weird kind of places and whatnot. What's uh, how how do you see that um, that have, do you think you've been able to impact people around the world through your BMX writing or vice versa or you know have you seen some stuff when you're out there and, and just gone fuck me man that's going to change the way I'm going to think that's going to change the way I'm going to act um, or I just want to do that fucking gap. <laughs> um, um, some yeah a lot of people uh, I've met. The- a lot of people that are probably better at this than I am, and they've definitely influenced me to be the way I am. Well, from yeah. traveling to be, you know, be more mindful about the environment. Um, yeah, but say thank you to all those people. Um, yeah, that, um, really have jumped off the cliff many yeah. times, and like you know, push push the boundaries of. Um, of making a difference in general, yeah. I guess. And, yeah. Um, and so you're out, how many people are you out building this half pipe with out in the uh, Aboriginal community? Um, there was three of us. Um, yeah. Uh, both, both the two other guys are originally from Adelaide and have been on and off living in Melbourne and living in Alice Springs. And yeah. I guess um, a good reason to go to Alice Springs, to Alice Springs and thereabouts is to build a ramp for the community. I think it's a good enough, a yeah, pretty good reason to get um, get your hands to, dirty yeah, and, and have time off from full time work. Um, yeah. Uh, and how many people? What community was it in? Um, a community out. Um, West of Alice Springs, about 250 k's out. And yeah. Like a permit area town. Um, it's like this small remote community where a lot of art comes from there and uh, uh, actually some good music comes from there too. And yeah. What kind of music? Um, an old 80s rock band. I forget what they're called. Uh, rock don't know how to pronounce it, but I think it's Rorimpi Ro- Ro- Band, which is an actual original name of this town called Papanya. Okay. And, yeah, they've been they're kind of like rock gods of Australia, other than like Midnight Earl and stuff like that. Yep. Um, they've got some pretty um, I guess there's not songs. a hell of a lot to do out in the middle no, of nowhere. Um, and making music and art. And, and now ride your bike. Yeah, or Ride bikes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and do a lot of those? Do a lot of the guys and girls have bikes out there already, or um, skateboards, or? Uh, I, th- uh, I guess um, in these communities, just from like being only in, uh, I've only had like a small snippet of what what it's about, but um, they share everything. Like, yeah. Like no one has ownership of that bike or that skateboard. It just ends up in. It, it, few kids' hands all at once, and they're all having fun with one skateboard. Right? So there's like ten, five, ten kids just riding this one skateboard or a couple crappy little kind of like cheap bikes and yeah. until it's completely broken and hopefully another one will come into town and they'll get to ride that for a bit. Um, but with um, uh, my two friends that went and built the ramp, um, Cans and Binner, they – also do um, like bike ed stuff and skateboarding um, clinics and things like that. So they donate um, bike parts and full bikes and do workshops and other things with the community around, around Alice Springs. Um, so they, they end, these small communities end up getting a few skateboards and yeah. where the ramps are and, and that kind of gets built up from that. But I think it's only been happening for the last – Five years roughly. Okay. So it's quite a new thing. Um, these kids having like a, an extreme sport outlet of music and yeah arts kind of thing. And I I think a common um, 
uh, I guess, a common uh, thought of when, well, particularly if, if you think about those far out kind of towns and, you know, 250 k's outside of Alice Springs is literally the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And we don't hear a hell of a lot about those towns and the things that we do hear are really negative. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what's your experience in actually being out there and, and doing something for the community and, and, you know, do you see that negativity? Is that a thing? Is it, um, is it blown out of proportion or? Um, yeah, again, I was only there for like in those little communities, like one was, you know, half a day and then three or four days. Okay. So, so I don't really have a full, I don't have a full understanding, but um, from my experience, being there, all the kids are really accepting and just want to get to know you and ride bikes with you and they're just yeah, just normal people doing doing their thing, yeah, loving it. And you know, a lot of these people are coming to, into town to see sport games, footy games, go see music, and yeah, it's so, you know it is in the middle of the desert, but you know, um, two hundred fifty k's on. The dirt road isn't that far, and you know, they, if it's the only thing you know, it's the only thing you yeah, know. Yeah, and it? yeah, um, they're definitely coming to town to like absorb all the other culture stuff that they just it's where they live, and yeah, um, there's a lot of people helping out, and it's I th- from yeah from my experience, it was really positive. Um, there are other things you see, um, like with your own eyes. It's like, well, that's pretty wild, like a um, bit of like rubbish here and there that, you know, this education, like what to do with rubbish is basically only bigger cities or bigger country towns and, you know, like yeah. no, no recycling, there's no, um, no bins anywhere. So it's like really hard to um, implement all that stuff, I guess, until... It was, I mean, it'll take a lot longer. Yeah. In some, some remote areas. I mean, I guess in some of those remote areas, they don't have that um, that fast food mentality in that mm-hmm. area either, they, which they is do good. They do have or... a convenience store, which is basically the same as what it would be in yeah, a right. normal, yeah. normal city, a normal suburb. So the rubbish is the same. It's like, it's still pretty mind blowing that like they're so far away, but the rubbish that is made in an industrial area near a city ends up there exactly the same way. Um, That's disappointing. Yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking. Um, yeah, it's like, mm, yeah, you'd have to go there yourself and experience it to um, see. And yeah, it'd probably just change people. As soon as you saw a few hours of this stuff, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, there is good and bad. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so. so the other thing and probably the most intriguing thing that I think that I've heard about you is the the dumpster diving. And people, like when I first heard of dumpster diving and getting food, I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm thinking you're eating like a half-eaten pie out of a fucking no. bin or something. But then learning a little bit more, it's absolutely nothing like that whatsoever. And, and um, so how, how did you... How, how the hell do you start doing that? Again, is it just like a waste thing? Like, what the yeah, fuck are you people doing? Yeah, it's just, I guess, well, once upon a time, I worked night shift at a Woolworths when I was younger, and I just saw all that going in, into the bins. Like, the dates are still good on that. Why are you throwing it out? And being that young and naive, I didn't get it. Didn't, you know. Um, why, so, why do they throw it out? Um. There's a number of reasons, but yeah, some some things, um, the expiry dates, out dates, so they've got to throw yeah. it out, and there's you know more product coming, or you know it's kind of like health risk, or you know that it might be off, so they've got to throw it out. You know, yeah, you know there's all that legal side of things too. Um, but um, I know I guess it's hard to explain on yeah, something uh, on like a we a podcast, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Personally, I do it for my own reasons, and yeah. and also because I see it, it's a big problem, and um, 
Well, since hearing of you doing it, I've heard of a bunch of people doing it. Mm. And I've seen people come back and from, you know, like, hey, man, it's Thursday night. And I know that 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 supermarket throws out this and this and this on Thursday night. And I've just gone and literally come back with a shopping bag full of Mm. just normal products. And And nothing wrong with it. Some some aren't even food. Some, uh, like, actually, one of the my most mind blowing ones is like a, a 24 pack of water being thrown out because the packaging that shrink wraps them all together is broken. So they throw the water out. Really? Yep. So See, you basically you get mineral water, soda water, it gets just get thrown out. And yeah, I know it's, it's pretty wild that one too. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, like honey gets thrown out that never goes off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, throwing out water because the bit of shrink wrap. I mean, that that's bloody stupid, isn't it? Yeah, and it, all that time and energy to make that is just going to. Do you ever buy water? No. Do you ever have a problem with like? Can when you come to Adelaide, do you drink our water and just go fuck me? That's terrible. It's not as bad as in Alice Springs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's water comes from a different spot, but yeah, you know, pour water and it's all yeah, just water tastes different everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because everyone always comments like Adelaide tap water is just foul. terrible, but I've grown up in Adelaide and yeah, it's just it's tap water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll get used to it if I move here. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of things that have nothing wrong with it get thrown out because I just feel at some point it's just a mass-produced thing and. Um, a lot of things get thrown out because more is coming regardless yep. if you like it or not. So it's so all about turnover. Turnover. Um, yeah, there's also uh, another like another thing with like fruit and vegetables. It's like everyone wants the perfect fruit and the perfect colour. Yeah. So if it's got a little mark on it or something, it just gets thrown out. Like Actually, some of those, some of those things actually never see a shelf ever. It just gets thrown out before it even gets from the farmer to the market so yep. it's actually a massive waste problem in all aspects of all this stuff yeah and i guess when you put into um the fact of how much energy goes into making a mass produced uh, vegetable yeah and then sorting those mass mass blah, mash, mass produced vegetables yeah um and and then having half of that turned around and, and basically what turn it back into compost do no, what landfill, with it, like... so um, it actually goes past that the compost layer. It goes under, you know, the the, the layer that cycled through yeah. the topsoil. Um, the landfill is under that in the clay in the dead soil, so yep. it never sees the light of day. It never gets, um, never becomes circular again. It's, um, yeah. So it's just absolute waste. Dead, yeah, absolute waste. It's I remember lot, seeing yeah. something, I think, in, well, it had to be Queensland, it had something to do with pineapples. Um, where there was a there was a farmer that just had like, too many pineapples, or you know they weren't the right pineapple. Yeah, the or there right was some, size or something. Yeah, yeah, it was something really really weird, and it was yeah. a fucking stupid reason. Yeah. But the guy had literally truckloads of pineapples yeah. that he couldn't sell. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big problem. It's yeah, it's not my area of expertise, but um, yes, yeah, like the size and visual appeal to fruit and veg that way. I think it's one reason why. Yeah. Um, um, fruit and veg gets knocked back. Yeah, it's it's pretty sad. Um, yeah, it's struggling farmers, and then they got drought and there's other things, blah blah. blah and yeah, then it's just right visual problem. Which yeah, is, it still tastes the same, but just won't eat it because it looks funny color green. Yeah, or, uh, like or yeah, funny color yellow pineapple or something. So, are you, are you vegetarian? Yeah. Are you vegan? No. Would you head towards that vegan lifestyle? Is that a, a progression that you see as realistic, or? Um, yeah, it's. I don't, I don't have all the knowledge on that stuff, but um, yeah, I don't know how to, how to speak about that. But like, I I don't eat meat because I just I feel like it's not produced the right way. It's not ethically done. To a mass scale, and um, 
How long? I, I actually, for my personal health, I feel like not eating meat is better for me personally. Um, yeah. That's your kind of, yeah. yeah, that's your number one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been a vegetarian for? Um, most of my life, I've just like had you know roast dinners here and stuff with my mum and yeah. kind of that's you know just at home. But other than that, when I've been out you know, since I was a young kid, I've always pretty much only ate fruit and veg. And, yeah. You know, sandwiches, I guess. You know, like yeah. And then you know, yeah, just tried it in. Eating healthy my whole life, I guess, but yeah, um, barely any fast foods and stuff when I was younger. And, um, yeah, it's just the way it's just yeah, the just way, way it works. It yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, as as a normal kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And and like, you know, my my backgrounds come from like motorcycles and yeah. engines and people doing silly things with stuff like that. And um and then now being exposed, I guess, to a lot of different people who ride push bikes and ride BMXs and. And the uh, the attitude and the difference between those two um, kind of very similar. I mean, they're both two good kind of activities, but the um, the background of, of people is very different in mm. in reusability, yeah. recycling, and huge huge difference Seems in so. diets and, mm. and people's diets. I mean, my diet's terrible. I won't tell you what the shit I eat, but um, <laughs> it's a, it's a huge thing. I think that's across the board in particularly in BMXs. Uh, um, is to be aware of your impact on what you're doing, or be aware of the um, of, of what you're putting into your body and the way that that got there. So, do you yeah. do you find that that's a common thing across the world? Is it is it just part of what that culture is about? Is it? Um, um, I guess that's another hard one to explain. Um, I think, um, yeah, bike riding is kind of like a niche sport and you know kind of like fit, fitting into stuff you have to le learn different ways to like be a part of society uh, I yeah i don't know how to explain it that well but um uh you know you benefit i don't know how to link it up <laughs> that well um uh yeah i've learned different ways to be able to you know educate myself or yeah. eat differently or eat health eat healthier instead of like you know, just jump in the car, going go know, down to pizza Macca's and Macca's. And, yeah. or, it's like it's always something not right with just accepting yeah. um, the n normal way of doing things. And I just always, yeah, I've always been attracted to other people that do the same thing too. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. It's, so it yeah. kind of just kind of sticks together and yeah. and it's the social glue. It, it actually should be the norm, but it's actually really hard. People prefer convenience over, Yeah, I feel like, yeah, they prefer convenience over putting a little bit more extra effort in to look after themselves or, you know, yeah. Yeah, again, I'm no, no expert, um, but yeah, something like, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So and and the other thing that uh, I was just I was just like looking through your social media before or something popped up something and there was a picture of you I think you're laying in the bottom of a bowl with blood coming out of your nose the side of your head maybe your <laughs> jaw you're looking pretty messed up dazed on the ground what the fuck was that about where were you um, accidents happen um, riding bikes motorbike or BMX or yep. road bike they're they're a dangerous hobby or sport or Lifestyle, however you want to um, put it. Yeah. Um, it's you know, kind of like an addiction. Um, at the end of the day, you just want to go fast and be happy and hang out with like-minded people like that. And, but, yeah, um, it's only like a, a small – it seems, seems a lot, but it's um, half in your mind um, when it comes to like an injury like that. If you feel like it's, that's the end, then that's the end. Yeah. If you push through it and like – you're determined to. Have, yeah. have you broken a lot of bones? Um, no. No. I haven't broken one bone riding BMX. No shit. That's a fucking good effort. Mm. I hadn't broken any bones until I rode BMX. <laughs> 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 fucking ain't shit. Yeah. Right. Um, What's uh, the worst accident that you've had on a BMX? Then? 
Um, I've had a few fractures. Um, you know, um, one was not wearing a helmet and had a pretty bad fracture in my skull in America a few years ago. Um, uh, the, uh, that would have definitely been the worst injury. Yeah. Um, I have had a broken bone, but I was riding my bike and I got hit by a car. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm actually a little bit more wary on the road than I am riding a skate park. I want to push myself to ride m- more skate parks and it doesn't matter how old I get, but on the road. How I'm, old are you? Um, 12. 12? Yeah. God damn. Still, still riding I should stop 12. swearing so much. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, keep BMX keeps you young. Yeah, well, riding yeah. bikes in general keeps you young. Um, thirty six, maybe thirty seven. I don't keep track of that either. <laughs> it's, um, it's around that mark. Somewhere there. Yeah, and and so you've got motorbikes and you've got push bikes. Uh, how many motorbikes have you got? Just one. Just the one. Just what, one. Is Yamaha SR five hundred or something. Yeah, or? an old an old bike I can learn to ride on. Yeah. Um, and fix um you know, again it's kind of like wanting to make my own make you know, old old skills trying to make your own instead of just buying a new bike and yeah like trying to keep something alive and turning over um repairing old things is yeah i'm passionate about that so yeah. it doesn't matter if it is old and that van as well or, that van you got is fucking cool yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I hope to make use of that and yeah, you know, do some traveling with that too. And yeah, okay. and yeah, um, what you said before with like um, the environmental impact of like bikes and you know fuel and oil versus pedal power. Yeah, um, it's like balancing out those things. Like knowing that you have, you know, knowing that you will always make an impact. Yeah, but always being aware of it. Being aware of it. And yeah. You know, making it only using those petrol powered or diesel powered or whatever things that are still around. Yeah. Um, is to also ride bikes to counteract that as much as you can, or use public transport if you have to. Or you know, this that's a it's a it's common knowledge these days those things. But a lot of people drive a lot still. Yeah. Um. Um, if you live five k's from work, you should jog there or ride a bike, not get stuck yeah, in traffic and make get an alternative. And yeah, I, well, really... I, I've only just learned that recently, man. Mm. And, and working in the CBD and being having basically everything always in the CBD, it mm. is a bitch to get in and out of. Yeah. It's a bitch to find parking. It costs a fortune. Yeah. If you don't get back into your car in time, then it costs you bloody an, an absolute fortune. And not realizing, I mean, a friend of mine who's worked in the city most of his, his adult life, and and he's he's always called the bus. And uh, I just thought, fuck, man, I hate public transport. It is the worst thing ever. I never want to be able to do that. <laughs> um, as technology changes, it's really easy to immerse yourself in your own environment within that public transport. And now I sit there every day on public transport, and I look at people and. It is such a difference, um, even from probably five years ago, in what we can do. I can do half of my work that I would have done in my in, in my morning. I can do that on the way to work. work I can yeah. do that and I can send emails, I can read emails, mm-hmm. I can do whatever I need to do to set myself up for the day. And it costs me less. Obviously, there's less in, environmental impact with yeah. that as well. Um, but I can't see the disadvantage. There is no disadvantage. Yeah. Why are people still getting into uh, into big cities in cars is is beyond me. And, and I mean, we've got a shit public transport network in, in Adelaide. Yeah. Half of it works okay and the other half just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how, how do you – have you seen our, tra- our tram system? Um, like we've been one struggling. One Marsh and back and that's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah it's and, just for sporting – Events and pretty much is it. Pretty much. If you love yeah. football, you will love our trams. And we can't even get North Terrace to like work properly. It's yeah. been like a year or something that we we can't get rail right. Mm. And that's something I think has been going on, I don't know, for quite a while. <laughs> it's kind of um, – that kind of stuff, yeah, I, th- I think it's still kind of old-fashioned. It's like a little bit backwards thinking still with um, transport, like, but there's also a counteract 
interesting measure that happens here too. The mayor and stuff of this town is definitely right into um, bicycle transport. And yep. over the last few years, I've come back and forward to Adelaide. I've seen a big change in like what the streets look like with all the bike lanes and stuff. So it's definitely going to encourage a lot more people to be able to do the bike commute other than getting stuck in transport with smelly armpits and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And angry, frustrated um, commuters in their cars, and um, but all these things take time, um, and every city is different, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you got the right people passing on the education the right way, it's gonna people are just gonna be riding bikes yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what makes you want to move to Adelaide then? Um, salt water, hills, good food, good company, like yourself. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's kind of like a, a small country town, but it's a city. Yeah. With, you know, all the good parts and stuff with that big cities have, but in a small area, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's like quite ideal. And it's a bit warmer for a bit longer than what yep. Melbourne would be. Yeah, um, definitely. Melbourne's very um, like London ish. It's uh, yeah, a bit of gloom when it's winter. Everyone kind of either bails, like we bailed to uh, Alice Springs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Wait, have you always grown up in Melbourne? Yeah, always been in Melbourne. Um, yeah, they de- de- definitely need to change the scenery. Um, yeah. Adelaide has, yeah, a lot of flat ground. Yeah. <laughs> to ride bikes around too, so it should be more more encouraged here to ride bikes than it is in Melbourne. Um, yeah, I, I think Adelaide's yeah. great for riding bikes. And yeah. in fact, like you're saying, man, the salt and the hills, it's so close together and, yeah. and the city's right in between. And it's, it's ideal. Yeah, it's it is mm. ideal. It's a real it's a really well laid out town. Mm. And it's a beautiful ride coming out of the city and heading down to down to the beaches and along mm. the beaches and whatnot that um, hopefully more people get get onto it and, and get encouraged to do it. And I certainly in the last couple of years have found that to be a good release and, and uh, you know, great great thinking time, great exercise time yeah. and, and just something different to do. And, um, you know, I've, I've always grown up in Adelaide and, and kind of looked at that as it's just what it is. Um, mm. And then, you know, meeting people from other cities and, and going and seeing and exploring some other cities is, is like, shit, this is actually really difficult to get around or... This is so hilly. Why the hell would you put a, a city here? <laughs> this is a ridiculous yeah. spot to do that. Um, we we didn't obviously have that uh, have have those issues with our flat land around around the area, but no. um, it, it works out quite well. But you seem to like, and that attitude is bucking the trend of what a lot of people are doing at the moment. And for the last probably ten or fifteen years, is people want to get the fuck out of Adelaide because there's not a lot going on. And it's a big country town kind of feeling thing. Mm. I personally kind of like it because yeah. of the reasons you said, but um, it's good to see people coming that other way and um, having some mm. different ideas and some some inventive kind of things and coming into Adelaide and into that space. So. Yeah, I see. I see Adelaide as like there's a lot a lot of things coming out of Adelaide in like positive um, aspects, like you know. Um, Renewable energy with all the electricity and solar and wind generators, wind, yeah, <laughs> wind generated power. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like the town being quite green with like promoting and implementing bike riding and push bike stuff. And there's all the um, BMXs that are helping out with like all the pump tracks and the dirt jumps all around town, which has um, got government grants and some other things going on. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure too, too much about that, but I know that you know, it's pretty How would proactive. you rate those dirt jumps? Which ones? The, like the city dirt. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty good showcase of jumps. Um, um, what, I forget what the word is, but like, not like world class, but like it's, uh, yeah, a really, really good place to like hold events and yep. um, build your skills up. And yeah, it's, and it's, right there like right in the city which is one yeah one reason why i'd like to move here is because it's so um the bike culture here is so accepting yeah the city itself so just having dirt jumps 
right at the city store is like make it's, it's, it's very just, just unique. Like, yeah, unique. It doesn't happen hardly ever anywhere. Um, and do you see that it's maybe a bit strange that we have such a unique and um, ultimately, I think the word is probably professional kind of thing happening in that dirt jump and trails jump thing, but mm. we don't have a skate park. There isn't a skate yeah, park that, in that Adelaide. Fell, fell down a few years ago, didn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you fell know, down with a little bit of assistance. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a really good skate park. But um, mm, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not from Adelaide, so I don't know how to explain that one. Like that was a really good skate park, and I guess uh, it was like, yeah. We've had something similar in Melbourne. We had a, there was a skate park right in the heart of the city. Yeah, but it's um, you know, city's got I got to go up. So the yeah, skate yeah. parks are one level and it kind of takes up a lot of room. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of uh, things going on that had to be taken away. But, you know, but implementing a new one, hopefully yeah. close to city. Yeah, might take a long time. I wish it was already happening. I know there's a, a, a temporary path. It's, it's pretty much permanent, but it's um, not that great. Um, yeah, it's, it's and, a, and and I think the, the the best way to explain the temporary park is is to say that it's it's we should stop calling it a temporary park because it's still there. Yeah, it's still there, and I think what it's been four years, something like that. That mm. that that's been around, and and. It, it's disappointing, I think, that we can be such a strong uh, advocate for cycling and such a strong advocate for uh, healthy living, creating pathways through our cities and, and doing these things. that they, they are all brilliant ideas and they really need to be capitalised on and advertised to mm. people. But we're missing on that, um, that, uh, that, that primary influence on a lot of people is getting out there and riding a BMX bike getting out there and seeing if you can do a little jump or a bunny hop. It's it's about forming those type of people that are going to have longevity to use these other services. And and I, I think that we're missing out um, from nurturing people with those abilities and, and giving people an alternative recreation that's actually productive and, and is going to be social and is going to be um, allowing people to use more facilities in our city. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the facility also has to be up to scratch too to be able to yeah. hold um, yeah all these workshops or clinics with bikes and skateboarding and things like that too. So yeah, this semi-permanent temporary skate park isn't the best place to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I I hope I don't yeah I don't know that don't know what the mayor or the, City council are doing so. I don't know. No, me either. And if, I know there's there lots of plans and there's been things talked about and, and things like that. So I mean, that's it's always good to have discussion. It's 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 fantastic to have action, um, but uh, I, I think it's important to have discussion before there's action because the worst thing you can do is build the thing and make it wrong. Yeah. And make it unsuccessful, and then have have those uh, previous decisions or. or mm or previous negative con connotations to those kind of areas yeah. um, and uh, and not have anything else, you know, be, be able to be produced. So from from a man who's who's uh, been around the traps in the skate parks and, and whatnot around the world, I mean, how, how do you, how would you describe the, the common commonalities, I should say, between skate parks and, and people who use them? Because there are a lot of negative connotations that, that people have with um, the people that frequent skate parks. Um, yeah, I th think that has changed a bit over time. Like, not, um, it's an know, old attitude, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely an old attitude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess with the, you know, social media and other things like that have definitely helped with like saying that, you know, me personally, you know, I try and do the best I can, do good and help other people or whatever. Yep. And, you know, a lot of other people do that too, that it be mixers and skaters and, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's just an old um, an old thing that will slowly change. Yeah, because yeah, we're um like outcast is a hard harsh word, but you know like <laughs> yeah. um we're a niche um, an alternative alternative yeah 
um, lifestyle, so um, people question it because it's not as common yeah. still. Um, but with all all the yeah the social media, it's definitely going to it has and will definitely change eventually. Like having BMX and skateboarding in the Olympics, it's going to shine some light on over more over time. But we're we're human too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I think that's going to make a, a big difference having uh, Olympians. It, it, it still actually seems really strange to say like that an Olympian is going to be a skateboarder yeah, or an Olympian is going to be a freestyle that's BMXer. So and weird. It, it's definitely weird. I mean, mm. personally, I think that the Olympics are becoming less and less relevant to overall society of, mm. of what it is because there's always I – mean, I want to see one thing. I want to see everyone take all the drugs, every performance enhancing thing. If that's your fucking thing, go hard. And I want to see how fucking hard you can go because we're going to kick ass. I want to see an eight second, hundred meters. I want to see someone throw a javelin like 150 meters. I want to see some fucked up shit. Why are we fucking around? It's crazy. Why are we stopping people from exploding in (laughs) doing, doing the the, the best any way possible? (laughs) Yeah, um, there's probably some good reasons, but I'm not going to listen to those. <laughs> I just want to see the action. And yeah. on on that, there's you know skateboarding, BMX, some alternative sports that are getting into like a mainstream Olympics kind of level. How do how do you think that affects people like you know X Games and uh, there's a Nitro Circus thing, uh, Nitro Games or whatever they put on as well. And I reckon that affects them. Yeah quite positive um you know they you know to get basically more people through the door because yep. there's more people interested to see what they're all about and um you know it's a really good showcase having the olympics and the nitro circus stuff um have you ever ridden one of those massive ramps um just like a mini version of it but still like yeah 35 <laughs> foot but two five foot. Uh, i forget how long it is maybe 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 30, 30 foot. No shit. Um, there's, uh, I could be wrong, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like the biggest part of it's like 30 foot and yep. it's in Geelong in Melbourne in an indoor park. Okay. It's a big, huge roller. Yeah. It's, just, yeah, it's definitely the, like a small version of like a mega ramp that they do at the X Games and it's the same, same principle. Yeah. So you get the same feeling of like high speed long jump. Yep. Over a gap, and yeah, it's pretty intimidating. Yeah, it would be scary. It's, yeah. What's the most intimidating thing that you've ridden? Um. Like the one you just went fuck this, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> uh, it's it's a whole bunch of bunch of stuff. Is like um. I don't know, like trails in front of a lot of people um, or contests is that that's really intimidating. So yep. it's different elements, not just like sometimes it could be a trick on something um, or yeah, it's, it's a broad spectrum. Of yeah. Things like the tests. Test well, things can nerve. be scary for different reasons and yeah, stuff yeah. as well. Can't they? Some, some of these things are only a few feet off the ground and scare the crap out of you. Some are yep. like two stories up and no problems. It's like yeah, it's a whole different level of level of commitment with that stuff. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and each each of their own when it comes to that stuff. People um, have their own fears when it comes to bike or skateboarding mm-hmm. tricks. So um, yeah, it's, yeah. Too true. Too true. Mm. Well. I've kind of run out of questions, I guess. I mean, is there anything that you want to uh, get out there to people and, and um, to make them aware of? Um, well, I, I had a, a, a little chat when we fit before coming in here to figure out what I was going to talk about. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know you um, you have this um, education thing in place, like a path a pathway for kids to get into either – be creative arts and get jobs and you know like I'm I'm quite nervous right now doing this so like if I can do this yeah um like being in front of a microphone or whatever um yeah yeah um, young kids can again I'm gonna use that analogy from before 
push themselves to jump off that cliff and get into something they're really passionate about. Um, that's kind of how this reusable coffee cup start came about because I'm passionate about a whole bunch of stuff and it's all in in that little business and yep. I want to make a difference and also educate people. And so, yeah, I also want to, in my own way, educate um, young kids to make them go out on their own to um, do good and change the world because it is the younger generation that we should be educating in the right and That's pushing right. in the right direction. That's right. Not That's right. Go, and, and here's our school system, blah, blah, blah. Like that, there's alternatives and um, yeah. I think yeah I think you're right I think it's about um, you know if I if I think onto a just a really simplistic format and put ourselves <clears throat> into a community and forget about what cities and what what families and what colors and what creeds and all yeah. of those things yeah. I think that everybody wants to build a community that is smarter than what the previous community yeah. or the previous generation is yeah. and and I think sometimes we forget that and the, the way that we get to that stage is is to let people, to guide those people, not to push those people and, and to let them follow their passions because mm. if we do something with passion, we really do take hold of it and it yeah. doesn't matter what your Definitely. test score was. No. It, um, it's, it's, a, it's a real big difference <laughs> yeah. when you can actually uh, be proud of what you're doing or, or just be intrigued with what you're doing and the things that you can discover and find um, is, is amazing. Uh, yeah. When you see people, and it's and it's great. I mean, for for what we do with High Street, it's great to be able to you know see some of that actually happening in front of yeah. your eyes and go, "Fuck me, man!" That dude barely says a word, but now he's smiling and talking quite freely about things. It's yeah. it's pretty cool. So mm. that's excellent. I I think that's a that's um you know a positive attitude and a and a and a positive way to kind of put yourself through life or or you know to 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 let that happen in some of your adventures around the world and, and uh, into different different parts of the world and, and hopefully we can get that message out a bit soon and hopefully we'll see you in Adelaide a bit sooner. 